cancer, the disease, spends most of his life completely undetected until a doctor delivers the surprising bad news, altering our perception of life and death. What most people don't realize is that there is another hidden disease, and we all have it. There is no cure, no vaccine, and no amount of surgery that can reverse its effects. It's terminal. It's called death. I think that we can all acknowledge the fact that we're going to die one day, right? Everyone watching this is aware that eventually, one day, everyone that you love won't be here anymore. Except that isn't true. You're not going to die one day, you're dying right now. Every day that passes by is bringing us closer to the actual event of our death, meaning that we're in the process of dying every moment. Any given moment is just leading us closer towards that inevitable death that we all will experience. Even our next hour isn't promised. And this isn't a problem by itself, but our reaction to this information can be. We all fear death, but for many of us, the life that we live isn't much better. You only live once is a misunderstood concept. Yes, you only live once. So why waste doing meaningless things that won't bring you fulfillment? People say YOLO as a means of justifying destructive habits that they will end up regretting long before they die, using the fact that we will die anyway as their reasoning for doing so. If anything, the fact that you only live once and that life is short is exactly why we should be more intentional about what we are doing. I'd much rather die young, striving to my fullest potential and giving my fullest gifts than live a life doing things that don't bring about good to anybody just on the off chance that I don't get to indulge in the quick pleasures of life. You know, some people will probably say, it's all meaningless anyway, and by the time that we die, they won't even care about how they spent the rest of their lives. In response to this, I would question them about all the people who have regrets on their deathbeds. The most prominent one being, I wish that I had the courage to live a life that was true to myself, not one that others expected of me. We know that most people die with regrets. We have evidence of this. So to say that you won't because you don't care and it's all pointless anyway, is just a massive cope to sound edgy and avoid taking any personal uh, responsibility for your life trajectory. Now I know that this is a grim topic, but I've been meditating on this concept of death a lot recently. There was a situation that happened a while back that sparked these thoughts. I was spending some time with my father at his place, the first time in a while that I had spent any quality time with him. I could see how much he was enjoying spending time with me, but it started to get late. Normally this would have stressed me out and caused me to go home. My sleep is very important to me and my work. But as I was getting ready to announce my leaving, I started to think about how the time with my father was limited. If he were to die the next day, or if I were to die instead, we both would have wished that I would have stayed and hung out. I would have lived the rest of my life regretting that I chose work over my family. And this sparked a lot of emotion in me. And these emotions led me to question what other areas of my life that I have been taking for granted and not um, living to my fullest potential. I even wrote this journal about it. Why am I the only person I know who lives as if I'm going to die one day? Death comes to us all. I know that I'll never feel ready for it, but I will at least do my best to give my fullest gifts on this earth before I do. And that's going to require a lot of focus and a lot of effort and a lot of sacrifice and a lot of pain and a lot of missing out. There were a few other experiences that also made me meditate on my death, but this one was the first and the most profound. If you start to meditate and acknowledge your death while doing anything, you'll find that you are more selective in what you spend your time doing more purposeful in the things that you end up doing, more willing to give things your best effort, staying and enjoying the present moment, more discipline, less likely to engage in instant gratification, and more present with family and friends, you know, the ones who are supposed to matter the most. The easiest way that you can incorporate this death meditation into your life is through a phrase, memento mori, which is Latin for remember that you will die, reminding people of the inevitability of death and the transient nature of life. Most people attribute this whole idea to Marcus Aurelius and also Seneca. Um, Marcus Aurelius says in the meditations, you can leave life right now. Let that determine what you do and say and think. There are actually accounts that claim that Marcus Aurelius had a servant whose sole duty was to whisper memento mori in his ear during moments of triumph and pride. This served as a a humbling reminder of mortality, keeping him grounded and focused on what truly mattered. Can you imagine 
like being at one of your highest moments so let's, let's say there's like some kind i don't know you just won a battle or something or i don't know like you're being crowned or whatever it may be and you're like the one you're like the most powerful man on earth and then you have this slave this person who's literally a slave to you you have him whispering in your ear right behind you at your best moments you're just a man you're gonna die <laughs> like that's so that's it's chilling when you really think about it um it makes me have a lot of respect for for marcus aurelius like hearing the story i don't know if it's it's true but if it is it's awesome so this practice of memento mori is just supposed to kind of help explain the stoic principle of accepting fate and living with the awareness of your life's impermanence it reminds us that regardless of our status or our achievements to live virtuously and embrace the reality of death as an essential aspect of being human. Memento Mori has been the one thing that has helped me get out of bed for the last few weeks. The thought of my death, which can happen at any moment, motivates me to be the best that I can be today. So the big idea here is to remember that you will die. And not in a depressing way, but such that ensures that you are living your life to your fullest potential and that you are giving your fullest gifts on earth while you still can. In this present moment, because the present moment is all we have and tomorrow isn't promised. And lastly, I wanna leave you with a quote that I found from Siddhartha Gautama. I don't even know if I pronounced that right, but that is the actual name of the Buddha. Someday we may be sick, we shall become aged. From death, there is no escape. Pride of youth, pride of health, pride of existence, all thoughtful people should cast them aside. That is all for today. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, be sure to check out my new free self-improvement community called the App Perception Alliance. I got some free courses in there. We'll be doing the occasional um, live call with me. Got hundreds of people in there already. So check that out. Um, also, I have a free journaling course called 14 Days to Purpose. Also, if you guys didn't know, I do one-to-one -one coaching and consulting for, um, you know, if you want to start a YouTube channel, you need help with business, YouTube, content creation. I can help you out with that. I have links in the description for that, as well as just general self-improvement coaching. I do that as well. I have single calls. I also do package calls as well, where you can stay in contact with me throughout the throughout the calls as well. So if you're interested in that, that's also in the description. And you can find all of this on my website, uh, theapperception.com. And last thing, if you're wondering why I'm wearing a Band-Aid, it is because I fell out of a tree. <laughs> so if you want to know... Uh, if you want to uh, know the full story about that, you can you probably even you can check out my second channel. <laughs> I'm all I'm all like roughed up. I have like scrapes right here. I have scrapes here on my back. I'm all like bleeding on my face. I think it's gonna scar. So that's fun. <laughs> but yeah, hope you have a great rest of your week. And uh, oh, new catchphrase: purpose is your priority, and inaction is your enemy. See ya.